Welcome to Epic, another podcast brought to you from With Purpose. My name is Chris, and I am the owner as well as lead business strategist for the company. Our special guest today is Brian Ward, president of DC Merchant Services. Hi, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing well today, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. I'm really glad you were able to get on um, and share with us a little bit about yourself and your business, because I do believe that I think, if I'm not mistaken, everybody uses some sort of what you are going to be offering. So really would like to dive into this, but as we do, tell us a little bit about yourself on a personal level. Well, as, as we know, my name is Brian Ward, and I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, University of Cincinnati alumni. Yay. Um, probably the most important thing about me is I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. Always want to do my best to love others. And I want to be a person of my word in my business and in my personal life. I'm newly married in 2019. I have two boys that I call my own that are from my wife's previous marriage. I, I enjoy being in the gym. That's probably the thing that I enjoy the most. I love weightlifting. And uh, as a side note, I competed in a physique competition in November of 2019 for the first time in my life at age 52. And uh, I enjoy golf. I enjoy the beach and almost any activity uh, that we can, we can get our hands on um, outside and with my family. So I've lived in Arizona um, since 2007. And at, at the present time, I've lived in six states in the country so far. So it's a little bit about me. My kids' names are, are uh, Aaron. He's our youngest. He's 10. And James is uh, 14 and going into high school. And believe it or not, he is about six foot tall and has a size 14 shoe. Yeah, so I he, believe it. I've got a boy just like that. He's a man child. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I've known you for a little bit, Brian, and uh, I've seen quite the transformation as you were uh, getting ready for the competition. Yeah. And uh, just real quick, um, how much how much time and effort did you have to put into all that? Well, uh, I, I would start by saying I had probably the best coaching in the country. And I think Marcel Z Zabrick, I'm giving him a plug, um, with Relentless Training is probably the best coach in the country. Whether you want to get in shape or whether you want to do what I did and compete. Um, but we started uh, with about four months and I was already in pretty, pretty decent shape, so I thought, but Marcel really um, really showed me how not in shape I was. I'll leave it at that. But it was, it was super intense. Um, it was four and a half months of, of incredible dieting. And the last three weeks of, my, of that prep was, was the hardest, most intense, not only from a training perspective, but, but from a dietary perspective was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life from, from, from just mm. straight discipline, physical discipline. Um, it was a lot of fun. I got a lot of, of, of uh, enjoyment out of the process. Just my wife went through it with me from beginning to end. I watched her, her, her change in transformation. She didn't necessarily eat the number of meals, but she ate with me and we did pretty much this together. And I watched her get to a point where, uh, where her, her body completely changed. Now, obviously from a, from, from, from a body chemistry, um, you know, there's, there's a difference between the two of us, obviously, but she's super insulin sensitive and I'm diabetic. So when you, you know, the, if, if she'd have put forth a little more effort in her diet, I think, I think she could have easily had an opportunity to compete if she decided she wanted to do that. That wasn't something she ever aspired to do, but we had a lot of fun doing kind of going through the motions together. So, uh, but again, it, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, and if somebody's going to take that upon themselves to do it, understand the, the level of commitment and discipline is, is, is pretty intense. Yeah. But definitely worthwhile. Very, very good. So yeah. um, let me ask you this, Brian, what would you clean first? Would you clean your room, a desk or your vehicle first? You know, that's, that's a, that's an interesting question, Chris, because, I think if, although I am probably, uh, if, if we talk about men, I'm probably a clean freak. I would be considered a clean freak. I like everything tidy and I like, I like to be picked up. But to answer that question directly, it's definitely the car. And I think that came from being in my car so much 
um, as I traveled um, as a partner and as a partner in Merchant Solutions, I was always in a car. I traveled 15 weeks a year. In the 15 weeks I didn't travel, I was here in Arizona uh, with my sales staff here, um, traveling with them. So I think for all that time, that that uh, what 12 and a half or 13 years, I was behind the wheel all the time, wow. and I just like it to be clean. Okay, so, very good. Yeah. So, do you have a favorite word or phrase, and if so, why? I do. Um, and uh, this is one that's pretty easy for me, actually. That word would be freedom. And I'll tell you why. I absolutely love the freedom I have in my faith and what that does for me. And I love the freedom that we've been able to enjoy in this great country. We are the freest country on the planet. And uh, there's been a lot of bloodshed for that, that freedom. Yeah. And a lot of folks have sacrificed for that freedom. And I'm just really grateful for that. I'm grateful for my faith and for the freedom my faith gives me. So that, I would have to say it's the word is freedom. Okay. And taking that word and using that word as a segue, um, you have a specific amount of freedom um, because you are a business owner. So tell us a little bit about your business, um, how and why you got into that as well. Sure will. That's a great question. I got into the credit card processing industry around 2007 when it was time for me to get out of the mortgage business, um, I had a really successful mortgage company in the state of Michigan. Um, we got involved with a straw buyer. Uh, I won't get into the whole story of that, but the long and short of it is that straw buyer situation forced me out of the business and we were cleared in court of any wrongdoing. Um, I, I flew, I took, took a little bit of time off and then, and then, um, I flew back to Michigan from Arizona and I wanted to um, have some conversation with the owners of the company because somebody I'd done a handful of mortgages for worked for the company and said, you should come check it out if you ever get out of the mortgage business. So, you know, I was actively looking and, and, and for another career path and God just directed me to this company. And I remember walking in the office, meeting John Lodler, who was my partner for uh, 12 and a half years and seeing him write a check back to a customer that had been overcharged by $33 just made it made a profound impression on me. Mm -hmm. And I knew after the interview with them and I, quite frankly, I, I did more interview and I wanted to know what I was getting involved in because I had a profound experience with God as a, as a, as the mortgage company went by the wayside and I was pretty much stripped of, of, of everything that I knew and had. And I knew that I wanted things to be completely different. And, and it was an amazing experience for me because I sold uh, for the company. I made a decision to sell for the company. And uh, then in, in, in uh, 2009, I was offered a partnership to buy in as a partner and, and to take over the sales nationally for the company. Um, the reason that happened was because of the relationships I built while I was selling. And uh, I was out selling everybody in the company after six months, not to brag, I mean, because I, you know, I believe there, there was a hand of, of, of God involved in that process. So I became a partner. And over the course of, of the next uh, 10 and a half, 11 years, we grew almost 700% because of a relationship that I established with American Express. Um, a good friend of mine, still to this day, I was recently in my wedding, was an American Express VP. And we ended up being able to provide all the Visa MasterCard Discover for American Express nationally on a referral basis. Wow. So it was, it was a very, very large and, and very, very um, successful relationship. So in 2017, Chris, we sold that company because John and Pete, my partners, wanted, wanted to retire. And in 2018, I started uh, DC Merchant Services. And I still employ three sales reps currently that worked for me or so to say work for our company uh, when, when I was a partner in Merchant Solutions. And coming into the business afresh, to some extent, I wanted to improve on some of the, some of the directives, some of the philosophy, and some of the, the way that we did business. I, I really wanted to look to improve. And as I was looking for an administrator, um, I found one because of American Express that was willing to put me in a position to be successful and be able to do things like um, 
build a stronger relationship and um, offering free terminals, um, which you know, free countertop terminals, offering month to month agreements or month to month contracts, which is huge in our industry. Absolutely. And some of my competitors have looked at me and, and said, you're absolutely crazy. Why would you want to do that? Because in most cases, my competitors will make as much in a deconversion fee or a cancellation fee as they'll make in two years in processing. Wow. So if they, if they can do that, sign somebody up, let's just get them in and let's, let's take them. I mean, that unfortunately is the thought process, not with everyone. And I don't want to throw our, our whole industry under the bus because it's not the case with everyone, but it is the case with many companies that I compete with. So, um, Anyway, we do all types of processing. We do retail processing, we do e-commerce, we do what's called mail order telephone order, and that's where the merchants actually key in the information in themselves, either into a cell phone or either into a, a computer or, or a device that they would actually have or own. And um, as I said, we offer the countertop terminals month to month processing, but I also do in, in, in the very beginning, with every customer, whether it's in the state of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, or Arizona, and we are in all 50 states, by the way, I just want to mention that, but, but my sales reps will send me a, a monthly statements, complete monthly statements to do a cost comparison or cost analysis on. We'll break the numbers down and then show a savings and give that back to the customer and it, if they decide to make a decision to, to come work with us, it gives us a reference point or a place to come back when we do an audit to confirm savings. Mm -hmm. So twice a year, we're going to come back and talk to that customer and we're going to show them what they're saving up front by what they provided for us in the beginning to do a cost savings comparison. And we, we do that and then that gives us that reference point to come back and, and chat. Um, that first cost analysis is completed. And if someone makes a decision to go with our company, then we're going to come back generally between 45 and 60 days when we have a full month of processing to actually analyze and do an audit for them. And then thereafter, every six months, we're going to do that. Okay. Builds loyalty, builds commitment. It, it, the, the last thing I want to do is force somebody to do something they don't want to do. I want someone to work with us because they choose to and they trust us, period. And okay. I, I don't, we don't want to do business. We won't do business as a company any other way. So, so Brian, just real quick then, why, why do you choose to stay in this industry? Um, you, you've got the bad, you've got the good, just like in any industry. Um, we know why you got into it. Why do you stay in there? Well, my, my answer to that question would be because there is an enormous amount of fulfillment in, in what we need, uh, um, joy, if you will, in watching someone save money and doing what you say you're going to do. In that process, our industry is, is laid out in a way that's very, very um, confusing. The water is muddy and people don't understand what they're paying. I want to bring simplicity and I want to bring transparency and I want to bring integrity to the business period. And I stay in it because of the number of clients I have that are so committed to our company and frankly, over the years are committed to me. Mm. I mean, half of my book of business followed me from the old company. So I have a rep in Ohio who's nobody wants to do business with anybody but her. And she's amazing in the fact that, that she's one of the best relationship builders I've ever known in my life. And, and she's emphatic about every little thing that she, she says she's going to do, she does. I've even had to get involved and call some of her clients before and apologize because there were things that were promised that were we didn't meet that deadline. And I've had to get on the phone and say, you know what, Mr. Merchant, Mrs. Merchant, we're, we, we dropped the ball. It's not Marlene's fault. Please forgive us. What can I do to make it right with you? Because my experience has been 
as I know yours is, Chris, people expect us to be imperfect, but they don't a lot of times expect us to admit that imperfection and then make it right. Yeah, that's the good. way we want to. That's the way we want to conduct ourselves. Are we perfect? No way. Do I want to do my very best to try to try to make that right? If someone misunderstood to the letter of the law and where it's even cost me money, I want to I want to be that person. I'm not ever going to be perfect, but you know the business is is being blessed because we do things that way. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that helps separate you from other businesses within your industry. So tell me this, Brian, what what would be one or two things um, that you've learned um, either in the way of leadership or about being a business owner? Well, I'd say I've learned probably as much over the last three or four months in business than, than I have maybe even through my entire career. I know that people are going to be people and we're always going to have challenges and we're going to make mistakes. That's in our personal life as well as in business. We have to be flexible. We have to be um, open to change. And the thing that's been probably the most difficult for me is learning to adapt in the time that we're in right now. Mm. Um, with what's going on in the world, you know, as I said, it's probably been the toughest time in, in my business career, but it's also been the most fulfilling in my business because I've been able to focus on my family more, most importantly, and I've been able to plan in my business better ways to adapt. So what we're going through right now is continuing to perpetuate growth, not only in my personal life, but also in my professional life. And uh, I know that, you know, that if we, if we continue to do business the way we are, that we're going to, we're going to continue to have challenges, but I know that we'll make it. And when, when it's all said and done, you know, that blessing is what I care about. The blessing is knowing that I'm doing things the right way. Yeah, there's challenges. In fact, I can tell you now, you know, businesses aren't processing like they were. That is a directly real, um, affects, you know, how a company like ours, who is a small merchant services company in the grand scheme of things, but it affects how we get paid and how, how much we get paid. So, you know, I'm, I've never been somebody who's ever believed that I'm going to try to get as much as I can monthly out of somebody. I would much rather make a couple pennies and keep somebody for 10 years, you know, versus sure. making a quarter and keeping them for two or three months. You know, and I, I, it's important to me um, what, what people think and what people go speaking about us in the general public, in the business world. That's why we network. Most of us that network are, are people that, that really care about how we do business because the fastest way to ruin a networking opportunity is to not do what you say. I mean, that, that's, that's my, my thought on it. And, and uh, so hopefully that, that answers, answers that question as best as I know how. I've had other times in my life that have been challenging, but it doesn't seem like it's been something that's lasted. I've had challenges with people, with, with, em with employees at the time that, you know, back in the day, when, uh, you know, when I had 62 folks that reported to me, it was a challenge to get to everything. And my family suffered a lot because of my, my lack of time management skills at times, quite frankly. I mean, that's it. Um, I've, I've definitely learned over the last 10 years how to be better with my time. And I'm still, I'm still learning that process, even, even to this day, how to be better with my time. So... Yeah, you know, uh, Brian, you, you make some actually very valid points there. And um, I think we get in, ourselves in trouble when we choose not to learn from the situation that we're currently in. And we're always looking for the next thing. And there's always life lessons. Um, you know, at 52 years old, oh my goodness, you, you put your body through something so that you could compete. Um, you know, that discipline, that integrity, that transparency – um, is all what literally makes us who we are. And by you bringing all of that into you as, or into your business as that business owner, really, again, helps you separate your business, DC Merchant Services, apart from all other 
businesses within your industry. So I want to say thank you on behalf of a community that may or may not know about you yet and say thank you for what you bring to the table, what you do through your business, through your industry. And thank you for bringing that awareness uh, to whatever businesses that you are dealing with. It's much appreciated. Um, so let me ask you this, Brian. What, is, what would be one thing that you wish you, or what is one thing that you know now that you wish you had known before you started? Well, I'd say the, the number one thing, and it's still tough to this day for me to deal with, is how dishonest competition can get in my industry. There's so many options now. There's so many people, you know, claiming things that are just not accurate. And, and I'm not trying to be glass half empty here, Chris. I'm just being a realist in the fact that I, when we're good in our industry, we understand our competition. And I know you'd agree with me on that. Um, but, I, but I would say that everyone's not pl playing by the same rules. And as I said earlier, there are significantly large fees that can be assessed to get out, to get out from underneath a processing agreement. They can be massive. And I've seen them as large as 20% of the last three months averaged processing fees added together and the money be 20% of that. I've seen it be where they take the last three months and they say the average of the last three months is what it's going to cost you to get out. That can be in excess of, of, you know, anywhere from a thousand dollars to I've seen it be as much as 3,500 bucks for big companies. Wow. They're not going to, you know, now if I can save them that money and show them that they're, even though they have to pay that fee in six months, they're going to recoup and then they're going to start saving like crazy. Again, it's all, it's all in the numbers, and, and that would maybe help in maybe dialing it down a little bit to a smaller number. It makes a lot more sense if, if someone's paying 300 or 400 or 500 bucks to get out, and I'm saving them 100 bucks a month. You know, they're breaking even in, in that short period of time, and it makes sense. Um, and the fact that they can come with me with no, no contract, they're not stuck with another fee. Right. So worst case scenario, if I didn't do what I said I was going to do, they can leave and go back to their old company. If you follow what I'm saying. I so yep. um, there are, it's troubling to me how intense the competition is at such a level of, 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 of difference in playing field uh, because one person or one company chooses to market themselves completely dishonest. And um, I, I've taken it a step farther in the fact that when I go over my statement with my customer, my statement's transparent. We're not hiding anything. It's all right there. And, and I will go through line by line exactly, you know, where that's coming from, you know, whether it's a pass through from Visa Direct. And you literally can see that what we call the margin in my industry, what I'm making. I mean, it's all right there. It's very, very, very open. I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, I'm not close. And, and some might say you're too transparent. Well, we all in business to make money. If I'm saving you money over, over my competitor, you don't expect me to work for free. No one does that. I don't think anybody expects that. But we're all in business to make a little bit of money and take care of our client. And it's been very difficult. And still to this day, I get questions about what am I supposed to do because of such and such? Well, my, my, my answer to that is, is that you are responsible to stay honest about our company and what you do and then leave it in your customer's hand to make the decision. And we can't, yeah. we're not going to, we're not going to add to or take away because we, we're trying to win some business. And I, and I'm thankful that I've, I've been able to hire a value system and, and that value system is one in which we walk a very tight rope when it comes to doing what we say in our integrity. And, yeah. you know, that, that's probably the thing for me that's been the toughest to, to understand in my industry. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and I was, I just share with you that I think that happens in every industry. Um, you made the comment about um, businesses out there playing by a different set of rules. I, I think you find that everywhere you go. That's just humanity, right? Um, and people thinking that they can get away with things. 
um, so again, I, I go back to appreciating you and thanking you for doing what you do. And I, one thing that you just mentioned too, as a reminder for our listeners, is that the thing that separates your business, one of many um, that you were just mentioning, was the the no year contract. You don't provide a contract. So if someone doesn't like what you're doing, or if you're not saving them money, they can go back to their the, the person they were just with or the company they were just with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, just to clarify, the contracts in our in our industry are three and four years, Chris. They're not one. They're three and four. Oh wow. Okay. They're a minimum of thirty six months. Every agreement I've looked at up until the one I have now has been thirty six or forty eight months. Wow. And then it costs our, money our, to our break that. With my old company, were thirty six months. Okay. All right. And then now, it would cost money. Car, our get out of jail fee was only two hundred ninety nine bucks, um, because we, we you know we assessed what every customer cost us and we needed to get at least that money from, from a cost perspective. Now, if somebody was with us for three years, then they, then they could stay month to month as long as they wanted. If someone went out of business, we'd let them go. We wouldn't charge them anything. If they could document them going out of business or shutting their doors or selling or selling their business for any reason. But however, I, as I said earlier, that was one of the things that I really wanted to improve on when I started DC merchant services, I didn't want that involved in any decision that a customer makes where I have to justify them potentially paying a fee to get out and then justifying my fee too. Um, that's what goes on in the industry. But in most cases, when I talk about lack of integrity, it's never even talked about. Mm -hmm. And someone doesn't know until someone's going into their bank account to pull a large chunk of money. And that's not cool. Right. So, right. Okay. So let's kind of bring it back to a personal level, Brian. If someone were to write a book about you, what would the title be? Well, I would have to say, <laughs> I would have to say the title of that book would be Mistake Ridden But Forgiven. Okay. And the summary would state that, that life's been amazing at times very difficult, but through it all, God's been there. Through my screw ups and my mistakes, I'm forgiven because of a free gift, grace and mercy. That, all right. That, that, that would be what it would say on the inside. All right. So, I, I like it. Yeah. So um, what would be the best compliment you've ever received? Well, uh, that that is a question that, that – and ponder a little bit. And I, I would probably say that one of the things that stands out in my mind was in 2010, I signed up a friend and he's still a good friend to this day. His name is Bill Groves. I signed him in, I signed him up for a terminal lease. Leasing was very big, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I misunderstood his business model properly and put him into a lease that he shouldn't have been in. Okay. I agreed to make his payments for 27 months, the remainder of the lease payments. At the completion of that lease, I got a letter from him in writing, not an email. I got a letter in the mail. And I'm going to try not to, you know, cause this, this person's important to me and this is something that made a profound impact on me. So I'm going to try to keep my tears from, from flowing here, but, his exact words, and, I, and I'm quoting him, is no one has ever treated me this way. You did exactly what you said you would. I may not believe the way you believe, but you're the real deal. He said, you're a person of your word to the very core. Thank you. I'm far from perfect, but integrity is all I have. And, and I made that commitment to him. And there were, there were some months where, well, let me back up. At that time in my life, God was really blessing me, and I really didn't have any problem making that payment. So it wasn't an issue. It was just a question of, of me making the commitment to do it. And when I made that commitment, I followed through. And that, that's his compliment meant the world to me. Hey, I'm often quoted as saying, Brian, um, that really individually, the only thing that we have to fall asleep at night with is our integrity. Yeah. And the moment we disrupt that, the moment we stop doing the right thing when no one is looking, we start heading down that slippery slope. And 
again, I, I've known you for a while. Um, I've heard you talk about this. I've seen people um, share that about you. Um, and I, I think if, if I were to summarize Brian Ward um, as an individual, as a business owner, in one word, that would be integrity. Um, so let me ask you this, just as a couple quick things as we wrap things up, what, what would you want the listeners to know in summary? Like well, how can they find you? What are, what are some key points? Great. Well, the, they, first of all, I'm here to answer any questions they have regarding credit card processing. Okay. We're not, we're not going to be pushy salespeople like a lot of folks are in our industry. We just don't do that. I want my customer to make the best decision for him or her in their business, and it needs to make sense. First of all, if it doesn't make sense, I'm not gonna let them. And there is a threshold, I wanna say this and kind of get this out because we didn't really talk about this, but um, if, if a customer is processing or if a merchant, a business owner is processing less than 35 to $4,000 a month, their best avenue to take, Chris, is through the Square or through an aggregate like PayPal. Because when you own a merchant account, there are ancillary costs that are the same, whether you're processing 1000 a month or 100000 a month that are passed through by, by Visa MasterCard. So if, if it doesn't make sense, then, then I'm going to let them know that at this time, let's wait till you grow a little bit and then let's get you a merchant account. Merchant account, there's a lot of advantages that people don't know about with an aggregate like PayPal or the square, you have no rights to your money. If there's ever a disagreement, you will lose and you will not get your money. It's happened multiple times. Many years ago, there was a class action lawsuit against the square. It was settled in Chicago. Um, so it's very important that you understand what you're getting into when it comes to an aggregate. But if it's a small amount of money, the widget or item you're selling or service you're selling, it's not a lot of money and you're processing less than say 4,000 a month. And that break even can be, can be around that number. It's not exact based on how and the type of cards you're taking, but all of those play a role and a factor into whether or not I'm going to offer a merchant account or whether it makes sense to hold off for a little bit. So um, folks need to know that. And, and when we do an analysis, which is free, it doesn't cost anything. We're always going to be transparent when it comes to whether it makes sense to do this now or not. We'll, we'll upfront let, let that customer, potential customer know that we, we need to grow a little bit more or let's wait until you're processing consistently, you know, four, four, five, 45 or 5,000 or whatever it is a month based on um, how that analysis breaks down. So um, if someone wants to send a statement, they want to get a hold of me, there, there are a number of ways. Um, let's start with my email address and that is Brian, B R I A N at DC Merchant Services dot com and they can reach me that way they can also call me on on our company 800 number that's 877-307-3330 again 877-307-3330 my direct line which is actually my cell phone they can call me on the cell if, they, if they're more comfortable is 623-262 5088. Again, 623 262 5088. Our website, which is amazing, it is incredible what we're doing on our website, is just DC, that's dog cat again, DC Merchant Services.com. And on the very first page, there is a savings calculator that will give our customers or potential customers or anybody that goes to the website an actual number that is. There are, there are some safeguards placed into this calculator to make sure we can be, again, transparent and that we can have integrity. So this calculator is probably going to estimate what your savings would be as an approximation, but to get a more definitive or exact number, because there's so many factors that go into this that I can't put into the formula that's on the, on the website, I want to I wanna do a cost comparison, an actual in Excel, an analysis of that business's information as a whole. Uh, that's card types, that's ancillaries, it's everything involved. It's, it's much more than just a rate. And then what we do is we look at what's called effective rate. That is the total cost of doing business. If someone wants to, and I'll end on this, Chris, if someone wants to end, wants to look at 
the very, very end result of what they're paying, they can take their volume, their complete and total volume for the month. That's how much they processed. And they can take their total expenses or total fees. And I like to say you take the little, the, uh, the little number and divide it into the big, excuse me, the big number divided into the little number. So we're going to take the volume and we're going to divide it into the fees. That is going to give you what's called effective rate. That doesn't lie. It tells the truth. It's completely transparent. And that's the rate you're paying currently to process. And that rate is what's most important. Not the rate you're paying for any particular card or any particular um, verbiage that someone tells you you're paying. Well, I've had that happen before. Well, I'm only paying 2%. That's what my rep told me. And then I go look at their statement and I show them the effective rate. It's four and a half. You're not paying two. There, there's hidden markups. So the only way to the only way to dis discern that is to take the little number and divide it into the big number. Excuse me, big number divided into the little number. Gotcha. So we're going to take the volume and we're going to divide it into the fees. So thanks again, Chris, for having me, man. This has been great. Brian, I, I really, you're a wealth of knowledge. Um, again, I appreciate your integrity and um, you educating us today. Th this has been amazing. And I, I hope um, I ask that people will reach out to you based upon the numbers that you've given um, and that we can just help you grow your business. Um, again, Brian Ward, ladies and gentlemen, president of DC Merchant Service. Uh, again, thanks for listening to Epic, another podcast from With Purpose. My name is Chris. It's a pleasure to host you. I'm the owner as well as lead business strategist for With Purpose. I hope you have a great day. Um, and whatever you do in life, work, or what you think, do it with purpose. Mm -hmm.